Let's now take a closer look at exploratory factor analysis. Uh, this part of the tutorial provides practical experience in conducting exploratory factor analyses uh, using several uh, data sets in SPSS. To begin with, let's cons remind ourselves of the steps involved in exploratory factor analysis. First of all, we need to test assumptions. They uh, relate to sample size and uh, factorability of the of the uh, correlation matrix. Secondly, we need to choose what type of factor analysis we're going to run. Uh, we can run either a principal components or a principal axis uh, factoring. Principal components is done when we want to analyze all the variants for of the variables, and that's usually uh, for the purpose of later on constructing factor scores for use in other analyses. Principal axis factoring only analyzes the shared variance amongst the items and it's more often used when you have a theoretical question and you do not necessarily want to go on and create factor scores. The second main decision about the type of analysis is the rotation. This can either be orthogonal or in SPSS language very max, which is for relatively unrelated factors, uh, factors that are independent of each other. Or we can do oblique rotation, which in SPSS is called Oblomen rotation, and that allows factors to be correlated. Once we've adopted the type of factor analysis, we can then start looking at how many factors there are and this depends on a number of criteria, um, including theory, uh, and then looking at the eigenvalues and where there may be a drop in some in uh, eigenvalues, such as shown in the scree plot. Uh, this will also depend on whether the last factor is uh, interpretable, and one should look at several different solutions, for example with two, three, four and five factors to determine the best solution. Once you've decided how many factors there are, you can then look at which items belong to which factor and primarily if we're looking for a simple factor structure, we're looking to see whether each item has a high loading on one factor and relatively low loadings on other factors. We may then find it necessary to drop some items rerun the analysis and um, look then at the number of factors in which items might belong. Once we've settled on the number of factors in which items we want to use, we can then name and define each factor. Having done that, uh, you can then look at the correlations between the factors, uh, the internal reliability of the factors, internal consistency, and, and compute composite scores if they're needed for use in subsequent analyses.